Welcome to the KASAT two-way installation video. This video is for use by certified two-way professional installers only. Any private individual must contact their distributor for installation advice. You must respect all local health and safety regulations pertaining to satellite antenna installation. UTELSAT does not accept any responsibility for any harm or damage resulting from installing a two-way antenna. First, verify that the contents of your two-way kit are complete. Please find the list on the instructions page. The transceiver or TRIA. The TRIA on the left is for the mid and top pole antennas. The TRIA with the black feed horn is for professional antennas only. The modem with Ethernet cable. Verify you have all the necessary tools for the installation. You can now start to assemble the antenna. Take the disc with A pointing upwards. Insert a coach bolt through the disc and secure the elevation azimuth head with a washer, split washer and nut. Now, secure the plate and head with four coach bolts and washers and nuts as shown. Spin the head so that the notch is at 90 degrees, then tighten all four nuts. Take the identical mask clamps and position as shown. Use flange nuts for the mask clamps. The next stage is to secure the antenna to the elevation azimuth head with five coach bolts and five flange nuts. Tighten all five nuts and be very careful not to deform the dish in any way. Now, construct the two arms by first securing the TRIA support plate with four long coach bolt washers and split washers with normal nuts. Make sure that the threaded holes at the other end of the arms are in the correct position for the threaded holes on the elevation and azimuth head. The yellow warning sign gives a good indication on one arm. Here are some examples of available masts. Please choose as strong a mast as possible, for example, with a 60mm diameter tube. The mast should be secured with at least 4 M8 raw bolts or 4 M8 bolts with plastic sleeves, depending on the type of wall. Weight loading for non-penetrating mounts should be according to local conditions. This table defines the wind loading limits. To allow two-way to communicate with the satellite, you must have two parameters to point the antenna and the spot color to program the modem. The azimuth angle is in reference to north and corresponds to movement right and left of the antenna. The elevation angle is in reference to the ground and corresponds to up and down movements. To identify the azimuth, elevation and spot color that corresponds to your location, you must go to finder.twayinstall.com. On this website, you are able to identify your location via three methods. First, using a map. The website then calculates the elevation and azimuth angles and your spot color. This color configures the circular polarization and the modem. 
You can also use GPS coordinates to calculate the angles and spot color configuration. Finally, you can also use the installation address as well. You can then go to the satellite view and zoom in. The arrow shows the line of sight angle. You can discuss the antenna position with your client before you arrive. KA SatFinder is also available on smartphones. This application includes a new pointing function showing the exact line of sight. Now you have all your parameters for your line of sight, you can start choosing your installation position. With your compass, identify the azimuth angle the antenna must face. You must have a clear line of sight to the satellite position with no obstacles such as buildings or trees. A person should be prevented from getting within a distance equal to the diameter of the antenna. You should also have approximately a 10 degree margin between your line of sight angle and any obstructions. The final criteria for choosing a good installation position is the maximum cable distance between the modem and antenna. The maximum distance is 50 meters, but can be longer depending on the type of cable. When cabling the antenna, leave a service loop of about 70 centimeters to enable the replacement of connectors. At the point of entry to the building, put in a drip loop. When drilling the hole in the exterior wall, drill down at a slight angle to prevent water penetration. For exterior connectors, always use compression connectors if possible. Strip away the inner and outer insulation to expose the center pin and dielectric. Make sure there's no connection between the shield and the center pin. Push on the compression connector so that the dielectric is flush with the bezel part of the connector. Cut the center pin about 3 mm above the connector. Ensure there's no earthing tress touching the center pin. Then compress the connector. The antenna weighs over 14 kilos when complete, so we recommend installing it in two parts. First, mount the dish on the mast, then secure in place with the mast clamps. Now, slot the two arms into place as shown. Fix the arm securely in place with four short bolts and washers. Normally, the installation would be on a wall, but to facilitate the filming, we've installed the system on the ground. We will now locate the satellite with the first pointing procedure. Install the KU pointing tool with easy-to-use Velcro, then connect to the analyzer. Mm -hmm. 
Now enter the correct frequency and voltage to select a suitable carrier on 9 degrees east. In this case, we've chosen the Akiva carrier on vertical high. Ensure that both vertical locking nuts are loose and adjust the elevation to the value indicated by the KA SAT Finder application. In this case, it is 33.6 degrees. Then, using your compass, find the azimuth angle and loosen the mask clamps. Adjust your antenna until you've maximized the 9 degrees east KU signal on your analyzer, then lock off the mask clamps. Now take off the KU pointing tool and mount the tria in position with four screws and split washers. Connect the earth cable to the tria as shown. Connect the coaxial cable to the TX port of the tria and tighten with a spanner to ensure waterproofing. Connect the modem TX port with the TRIA TX port. Power up the modem by plugging in the power lead. After modem boot up is finished, plug in the Ethernet cable, then connect your PC to the modem. For Windows 7, click on Start, click on Control Panel, click on View Network Status, click on Change Adapter Settings, right click on Local Area Connection. Click on Properties, click on IPv6 to deflag it, click on IPv4, then click on Properties. Check Obtain IP Address Automatically is highlighted. Click OK, then Close. Now you need to configure Internet settings. Click on Start, click on Control Panel. Click on Network and Internet. Click on Internet Options. Click on Connections. Check Never Dial a Connection is selected and press OK. You are now ready to program the modem. Type in the address 192.168.1. 100.1 in the URL window, then press Enter. You are now in the modem user interface on the home page. You can enter the modem page with details of the modem and the TRIA page with details of the TRIA. To configure the modem for installation, enter the address and install. You now highlight the spot color indicated by the KA SAT Finder and press on the arrow on the right hand side. You now enter a new screen for antenna pointing. We now move to the second method of finding the satellite with an inclinometer and the TRIAS beeper. Now you hear the heartbeat tone. Check the elevation locking nuts are loose. Check that your elevation is correct with the inclinometer. In this case, it is 33.6 degrees. Check your azimuth angle with a compass. 
Fix the earthing cable to the mast clamp. Remember to score the paint to ensure a good connection. You should turn the antenna until you hear the ambulance tone. You then hear the locking tone. Now, lock off the mast clamps while still hearing the locking tone. Lock off all four nuts equally. Remember, these should be locked off as tight as possible. Now reset the modem SNR meter. You do this by placing your hand over the feed horn for seven heartbeats. You hear the ambulance tone again. Check the azimuth locking nuts are loose. Start fine pointing the azimuth by turning in one direction. When you hear the tone drop, change direction. The continuous tone at this point does not indicate maximum signal level. You must hear the tone drop a second time. When you hear it drop a second time, change direction. Now make very small movements slowly. Very slowly until you hear the continuous tone. Lock off the two azimuth locking nuts as tight as possible. Now, you must reset the modem again, waiting for seven heartbeats. The ambulance tone, then the lock tone. Check the elevation locking nuts are loose. Start fine pointing the elevation by turning in one direction. Hear the tone drop, then change your direction. The continuous tone here does not indicate maximum signal level. You must hear the tone drop a second time and change direction. Now, make very small movements slowly, very slowly, until you hear the continuous tone. Lock off the two elevation locking nuts as tight as possible. To test the pointing, gently push and pull on the top of the antenna and see if it returns to a continuous tone. Then push and pull on the sides of the antenna. Again, it should return to the continuous tone if it is pointed correctly. Once the pointing test is finished, you'll see a third box with a tick. Once you have a tick, you click on the arrow on the right-hand side. The first stage is receive synchronization with the network. The modem then ranges and synchronizes its transmission and enters the network. It then receives DHCP and network information. 
Finally, when the LAN LED is blinking, it's on the last stage of synchronization. When all four LEDs are on, the modem is online. It is ready for activation with the activation code. Whatever internet page you enter, you should now go to the activation page. Click Enter. Please record the RF parameters for the installation report. Enter your activation code. Modem activation should be finished after reboot. The antenna will receive a large number of KU band television satellites. There are a number of multi feed supports available. You need an analyzer for this as the pointing and polarization needs to be precise. 5 degrees west position for Fransat, TNT via satellite for France. 13 degrees east or Hotbird position for Western Europe. Twenty-eight degrees east position for free Saturn Sky, available in the UK mainland. There's also a universal support that can be used for a number of satellite positions at the same time, as shown for the twenty-eight degrees east position. Thirteen and nineteen degrees east position for most Western European countries. For anyone wishing to be a certified two-way installer, the two-way campus offers a three-part online course. The final online test is a realistic 3D antenna pointing simulator. The KA Sat Finder is an essential online tool to determine both your line of sight angle and modem configuration. It is available for all computers and mobile phones with an offline version as well. The two way extranet offers certified installers multimedia support, documentation, and a discussion forum.